everyone, this is Brian from ActiveMelody.com. Well, in this week's guitar lesson, we have an up-tempo, funky, bluesy rhythm with a little bit of Hubert Sumlin lead thrown in as well. So I'm going to show you how to play everything that I played in the intro, note for note. We'll break all of that down over the course of two videos. So in this first video, we're going to take a look at the first half. If you want to watch the second half, as well as download the MP3 jam track, which I have in two tempos, by the way. I have the, one, the tempo that I played in the intro, but I've also got a slower one for those of you that are just getting started with this, uh, so you can work your way up, uh, as well as download the tablature, uh, you're going to want to go to activemelody.com and look for EP090. So let's go ahead and get started with this first video. All right, so before we jump into the specifics, <clears throat> let me call out the key that we're in and also the chord structure, just so we're familiar with that. Uh, and this, in this part, you can just kind of watch along. You don't, don't have to try and play any of this because these aren't chords that we actually play when we're doing this, but I just want to call out the structure. So we're in the key of F sharp, and so the first chord is an F sharp minor chord. Now most blues that we do is usually, you know, they're usually in the key of A, or maybe E, um, sometimes G, but I don't know that I've done a lesson in F sharp like this, uh, with an F sharp minor in it. Um, but I thought it, this would be good for, for you, just kind of get out of the norm. And, uh, you know, kind of, it forces you to kind of look at the the, the patterns in the pentatonic box a little a little different. Sometimes you can get kind of comfortable with certain certain keys. So so there's the F sharp minor uh, chord. The next chord is a B seventh, and then we're back to the F sharp minor. Then I come up to an a, to a C sharp seventh. Walk it right back down to the B seventh. And then we're going to resolve on the F sharp minor, which is kind of nice. So you have this minor chord, but then you've got these major chord or this, you know, the seventh chords thrown in, and it's kind of a cool combination to have both of those living in the same little jam. Now here's uh, another little sidebar here, but y you could take that same structure and apply it to any key. So if you wanted to do something like this in the key of A, for example, you could take the, uh, you know, use the same theory. So you have an A minor instead of the F sharp minor. And then you could have a D seventh, E seventh, down to the D seventh, and there's your A minor. So I just kind of point that out to show that you could transpose this to any key if you wanted to. Okay, so there's that. Now here's the little riff that uh, we start with, and it kind of repeats over and over again. It goes like it goes like this. And um, the way that I do that is I start. Uh, let me. I'll walk through the notes. I'll walk through the the strumming or the yeah the strumming with the right hand, and then the the key that we're in and the patterns we're using. So you really get all of this in context. But the first note that we play is the second fret sixth string, and I play that with my pointer finger. Now I there's two ways you could do this next part. I I like to take my pointer finger and come up here and bar the first three strings on the second fret, and I only play strings two and three. I use a downstroke with my right hand. Just those two strings. Now you could argue that it could be more efficient if you just barred the whole thing and played it like this. But I, that doesn't, I don't feel like I have as much control when I'm doing that. I like to kind of uh, control it. So that's up to you. I'll leave that one up to you. But that's how I do it. I play this and then I play this. So they're separate things even though they're all played kind of in the same fret. Okay. Uh, so that's the first two things you do. Now the next thing are these little five notes that go like this. Um, and there's some palm muting going on, which I'll explain as well. But here are the notes. So it's fourth fret, fourth string, and, I, and use your ring finger for that. Uh, let me talk through the notes, then I'll talk through the picking. So that's fourth fret, fourth string. Then you use your middle finger, and you come down here to the fifth string on the fourth fret. So you have both of those are in the same fret there. Now you're going to take your pointer finger and come to the second fret fourth string. And then we're back to the fourth fret fourth string, which is the note we started with. Okay, so those are the notes. Now the way that we're picking that with the right hand is just it's alternate picking, which means down, up, down, up. So watch this. It goes down, up, down, up, down. And so that happens kind of quickly. So you're going to have to kind of practice that if you're new to picking. 
um, but that's that's what you're going to try and get to. Now remember, I do have two versions of the jam track, the MP3 file that's included for premium members. So you could you if you know you may want to start with a slower version, slower tempo version, so that you can kind of practice and kind of get comfortable before you move on to the the normal the normal tempo. Now the other thing is I mentioned I'm using some palm muting. That's taking this part of your hand and kind of resting it on the strings back here to get that sound as opposed to this. Hear how one of them rings out? This just kind of dampens it. So that's what gives you that real tight little control sound. Okay, so that's the that's the little intro riff. It goes. Oh, watch this too. So after we do that final note, which is here, you're gonna do that with your ring finger so that you can reach up and grab that six string second fret again. And notice that that's an octave of itself. So that's, both of those are F sharps. So it just becomes a little loop and you can loop that over and over again. It's really a lot of fun to do, and and actually, you know, I want to point this little rhythm uh, trick out to you because you can use this if you're ever playing, you know, kind of an up tempo blues. Um, you can always pull that out, and you can change it and make it major or minor. You know, just but you could use that same premise, and, and it just gives your rhythm, rhythm, rhythmic playing a little more energy, a little more spice than you know just strumming a chord that's kind of boring um, okay so there's that um, now when I go when I switch to the B seventh part by the way that goes that plays through four times now this is what I do when I go to the B seventh part so this time I play the bass note uh, or the root note uh, on the the B, which is here on the second fret fifth string. So remember we started here. Okay, now we're coming to this chord, so we're gonna come down here and play the just the fifth string on the second fret. Then I'm gonna play. Now that is easy to do with the left hand because all you're doing is barring the first three strings uh, on the second fret, and then you're gonna bar the first three strings on the fourth fret and then back to the first three strings on the second fret. So that's what you're playing. Now the challenge is to get the rhythm going. So let me do that slowly. Notice there's two, there's one downstroke. So after we play that note, there's a downstroke there's a kind of a ghost downstroke there. That's just to keep your hand in, in the motion. So if I were to do this really slowly, which is kind of hard to do actually, but notice those that's an upstroke and that's an upstroke. And when you're doing those upstrokes, you're trying to hit the one, two, and three string. And, and um, after that, I play this these little notes that put me right back to this five. Now I was just going to play the five like this. Uh, more James Brown style, if you will, but I thought it sounded kind of cool to... I was listening to some Hubert Sumlin stuff and I saw he would kind of throw in more of a... I was almost like playing a bass part um, if he's playing rhythm. But that's how I did it. So I'm on the fourth string... I'm sorry, fourth fret, fourth string. And then I come, and this just makes a little box here between the fourth fret and second fret. But the fourth fret, fourth string, second fret, fourth string, fourth fret, fifth string, and then we're back to the second fret, fifth string, which is where we started. And again, with the right hand, it's just down, up, down, up. Actually, let me take that back. It's down, up, down, down. There's actually two downs. Um, you could, I think it's easier for that, that last note to be a downstroke. Yeah, so down, up, down, down. That's how I'm doing that. So let me talk through this little rhythm part again. Let me just kind of break it down a little more detailed. So, um, after we play that, then we have the... 
there's a, a ghost strum there where I'm just kind of muting the strings. So let me call these out. Ghost strum, downstroke, another ghost strum, then we're going to do an upstroke, and another upstroke, and another ghost strum. So you may want to write that one down so it's ghost strum, downstroke, ghost strum, upstroke, upstroke, another little ghost strum. I'm overemphasizing them. You can hear them kind of happening in between. See, it's really important for those to be upstrokes so that you're in position to do that little downstroke there. And it, I mean, that, those are probably annoying details, but it, it's critical if you want to get that, that feel. Um, and that's, that's how that's created. So to get back to that F-sharp minor, I went like this. So I just took that same little run. Uh, and then instead of, like I went to the B part, I, instead of doing that, I go to, back to that F-sharp, uh, which is on the sixth string, second fret. Like that. And then it just repeats. Okay, so let me back up and I'll play everything up to that point. Okay, so just so we have this as a reference. So here we go. Remember, there are four of these. and I play, I use my pointer finger for this, uh, and that's important so that you're in position. So what I play, do there is the fifth string on the fourth fret. This is that C sharp uh, part. And I use, do that same, you know how, here I, how I play between the second fret and the fourth fret? I do the same rhythm, but I'm playing between the fourth fret and the sixth fret. So it makes that part of it easy. So I, I don't even have to go over the strum pattern because we've already covered it. So it's... And then we're right back. There's that same little walk down. That little box that happens between the fourth and the second fret. And then right back to the uh, F sharp. So that's the, the only challenge will be switching it up. Anytime you're playing the F sharp part, remember the rhythm is. But when you're playing the other parts, the seventh chords, the B seventh and the C sharp, it's. So the, the rhythm kind of switches a little bit. Uh, it sounds fine when you hear it, um, you know, played up to tempo with the with the backing track and everything. But when you're trying to do this on your own without any accompaniment, you might get confused and try, you know, have a hard time remembering what the rhythm is. So this is an awesome lesson for for helping you get your timing and rhythm. Um, and for some of you, if you've just got natural timing, this will be a, a walk in the park. But I know I get a lot of emails from people that that struggle with timing, and so this would just be a great way to kind of force you to, to kind of go over this stuff. Um, so let me back up. So really that's the only parts. Um, just remember when you're playing, when you go to the C sharp part, you use your pointer finger here on the fifth string, fourth fret. Okay, so let me, just as a reference, I'll go ahead and play through the whole thing one more time. I'll do it kind of slowly, so you have this as a reference, and that will conclude the, the first part. And if you want to watch the second part, make sure you hit up activemelody.com and look for EP090. So, okay, here we go.
One other thing to point out, I did not do a turnaround chord, which if you did it, you'd do that C seventh or C sharp seventh chord right there. Um, I just left that out so that it, it does go right back into it. So at the end of it, uh, when you're playing along with a jam track, um, you'll just keep playing. And if you watch how I play in the intro, you'll see it just keeps uh, it just keeps going. So you'll just have to like mentally, as you're playing along with a jam track, kind of keep up with the timing. Now, if you were playing this with a vocalist, that would be a lot easier. You'd have more of a yeah, of a reference. Um, but you know, so that would be a challenge that you you're just gonna have to kind of look out for just to sort of count it through. But again, a great lesson for timing and helping to get your rhythm chops up. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and move on to part two.